Right then guys, hello. Scorching hot day today and uh, prepper tip of the day is get yourself a, a stainless flask. So if you have to leave it in the car and the surface is scorching hot, then the insides will be cool. Yeah, absolutely beautifully cool. Uh, just a little trick you just learn, don't you? By accident. Mm. So yeah, it's a scorcher today and I've actually brought the vehicle now in and uh, parked it under the trees because yeah it was getting a little bit silly out there so yeah aircon pump it's not the aircon pump <laughs> now i got a shorter belt for this and i was lucky because uh, the design there are so many different variants the the guy at uh, duff morgan it was a citroen dealer says yeah no just stick a belt on this is the the, the length you need it's 800 and some uh, millimeter it's a poly v belt yeah 6pk i'll explain that in a little while what the uh, poly v belt is yeah but yeah that actually bypasses the aircon pump very very nicely without a problem okay so anyway uh, with diagnostics if you're looking at the front end of a vehicle take your belt off and then run the vehicle to see if there's any other noises okay and uh, i did that um while i was going to change the belt no other noises so i'm thinking right okay there's nothing engine side it was absolutely beautifully ticking over and i put the uh, multi v belt on and what happened the noise came back after i bypassed the aircon pump so we <laughs> Houston we still have a problem here because we've got to now work out what it is there are three components in there one of those is the alternator which I don't think it is yeah um, the other one um, could be the idler itself yes because usually what happens is the bearing will squeal or it'll sound rough as it's running but it's not a check that that seemed to be okay but it does bounce on the belt quite a lot and it looks visually and aud audially by eye and ear it looks like that could be at the fault but the the crankshaft um pulley is also a dampener is a harmonic dampener now there are two bits to that there's an inside and an, an outside with rubber sandwiched in between and the whole idea is it moves as it takes up the torque so the belt doesn't slip or it doesn't snatch okay and most cars have got them now uh, what happens it, it is always always flexing so that's a possibility that it could be that as it's running um and it's this is only on on idle and a little bit higher so it's about 700 rpm yeah um it's it's noisy but i couldn't ascertain um the condition of it so i took the uh the pulley off with the gun and i had a look i had a look behind there as well to see if there was any swarf any evidence of damage that possibly could indicate that noise when the engine is running and i couldn't i couldn't see anything at all there is a lot of uh, spring in that but it doesn't seem to be really really loose you know so i put it all back together gun that up and i will have to talk it up but um yeah i've got a cho choice of two components is which is what and what is causing the noise because it will only do it with a load on with a belt on I wouldn't roll it, rule out the alternator because the alternator also some of them have a clutch on on the uh, the pulley but this one hasn't yeah but i can not see anything by spinning it at all same with the idler pulley there's plenty of uh, tension in the uh, adjuster or the tensioner okay so i'm i'd say that i'm about 70 percent sure it's not that so i'm looking at possibly the harmonic dampener yeah you might say otherwise don't know we can you can have some bets on this to see what it is because i've got to change one of the two components and make a decision on it yeah so i'm going to go first of all for the cheapest option which is the crankshaft pulley yeah and i'm gonna to have to take it off and then talk it up properly as well when i put the other one on and i think it's that i think it's that yeah problem is, is i can't see anything that's indicating a fault with it 
okay and it will only do it when there is a load on the belt as such yeah when the belt's fitted otherwise it's okay it's quiet it's quiet without the belt fitted yeah behind the crankshaft pulley is a timing belt and there are idlers and the such like but it doesn't seem to be uh consistent because if if you have idlers um running they make a lot of noise if they're getting dry so don't know on that one don't know on that one but i did have a look at the old haynes manual just to see what's behind the the idler pulley and there's there's nothing there's nothing really that interesting there just the timing belt yeah and all the diamond belt uh crank shaft pulley the keyway and everything is there so it's it's okay yeah so yeah, this is what I'll do. I'll order one off uh, off eBay. I'll order one off eBay and see how we go. Yeah, right. So if you don't know uh, what a multi uh, multi groove belt is, okay. Basically, it's a poly V. Okay, poly means uh, more than one. It's like polygamy or polyamorous or something like that. Yeah. So you have this uh, arrangement. Okay. Now this has six, so it's a six PK. Yeah, and. Uh, that's how they don't donate how many grooves are in a belt whereas the length will be say the number this one's for the aircon which is uh, 6pk975 uh, yeah that's the actual length of the whole belt okay whereas the one that i fitted the shorter belt which doesn't need an idler on it is 6pk800 6pk800 so that's taken a hundred and uh, was it 79 well, 75 175 mil off the belt okay so we're gonna have a little bit of saving in fuel there's less things to, to run on the engine so that's a bonus straight away although I haven't got rid of that noise yet yeah if you happen to uh, not know how to do your alternator belt then you need to know you need to know okay and um, these are simple because basically all you need to know is the routing of the belts and which way you pull the tensioner and with what tool you pull the tensioner. Now with this vehicle, uh, I have to take the wheel off and take the inner wheel arch out, which is easy. It's only popped in by a couple of bits of plastic, yeah? And then I can get my hand over the top and underneath so I can pull the adjuster towards me with a spanner. That's how it's required on this vehicle and then work on the belt on the crankshaft pulley putting that on of course you want all the uh the grooves in the right place and then that should run fine because once you've let the tensioner off that's automatic there's no adjustment on them all right guys just for the ones who are curious how to do it each one is different but how i've done this is just show you i found the easiest route to do it put it on the alternator pulley run it round the adjuster and then sit it on the top of the crankshaft like so and then I've gone up the top, okay, so I can access both areas at the same time. This is why the inner wing needs to come out. Pull the adjuster up, so it's uh, slack as it were, and then put the belt on. But what you need to be aware is when you put the belt on is that it sits nice and snugly in all the grooves, okay. We've deleted now the uh, air con, but you need to make sure that it sits properly. If not, then just pull the adjuster up and move it until it fits. Then afterwards, start it up and run it and make sure the belt doesn't get thrown off as simple as that yeah so guys while editing this video i just noticed the movement on the pulley if you see that yeah that's sliding across i reckon that's fucked but we'll see we'll put a new one on oh a long time ago some belts you'd have to adjust the tensioner just right uh, by moving the alternator maybe to get the tensioner on a uh, single v belt yeah that was those were the days weren't they and those belts always snapped yeah but nowadays these uh, poly v belts last a long time it's a good reliable system as long as you've got a good tension on it and the uh, uh, grooves in the pulleys are uh, clean yeah so i always carry a spare belt on me so this is one thing even if they're reliable just keep one just in case because you never know and i had this with my brother-in-law he had something uh, fly up into his uh, uh, crank arrangement and it, it cut this in half it cut this in half he lost the belt we had to go out and replace it for him yeah so that is a one that is a one so <coughs> you can hedge your bets now uh, in the comments below and say what are we looking at are we looking at dampener or are we looking at the uh, the belt tensioner 
Yeah, like I say, I think it is the harmonic dampener. It does happen. People say, yeah, they do rattle like hell, but I, I'm, there's no evidence of it because there's still tension in there. There's quite a lot of tension in there. So, yeah, it's a bit of a guess. We'll get the parts cannon out and we'll keep firing bits at it until we solve the problem, yeah? If not, if not, if worst comes to worst, <laughs> we'll just uh, get a, a can of petrol and a box of matches and get rid of the fucking motor. <laughs> no, not really. I'm, I don't like that. I'll just... just just get on and we'll get it fixed yeah so uh yeah you might think it's a bit of a, a cobble but sometimes diagnostics is well okay process of elimination yeah eliminate one thing and another and another until you get to it and that does mean sometimes that you have to replace parts yeah I've done it before on quite a few things this one is is this one's a tricky one this is a tricky one because i say there's no evidence of of, of any excessive wear so that's the problem. That's the problem. That's the crux of the problem. Right then, guys. Hello. And this is just a little bit at the end of the video. Um, I'm going to chuck uh, information in here, there and everywhere so you can build up a picture, as I said I would do. And I will be eventually, over time, when we get enough subscribers and the channel gets established, I'll start doing covert competitions, which means you got to watch the video all the way through to get the juice, haven't you? Yeah? You can't cheat on this because it could be at the end or the start or in the middle. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, I just like doing things like that because, yeah, giveaways are good, aren't they? Giveaways are good and stuff that I get to, to preview, then there's always a chance that I might give it away in a competition later yeah so anyway i was uh, watching magic prepper and he was talking about storage and he was talking about storage of tires and i had a little bit of a cringe moment because personally i don't agree with storing tires and i'm going to tell you why in this and i'm going to tell you how to uh, check the age of your tires and you'll be surprised actually uh, how old some of the vehicle tires are yes now a vehicle tire over 10 years old is not very good it's not very good commercial vehicles on steer axles and on mini buses on the rear yeah they should be changed at 10 years because they become unreliable it's mainly due to the core flexing in the tire but also um when you have a tire that's stored up for any length of time let's say two three four years uh, there is a compound in that tyre which is anti-UV, uh, which helps the rubber to stop breaking up under sunlight, okay? But it needs to be worked. It has to be on the vehicle. The tyre has to be on the vehicle, and it has to be heated and cooled and heated and cooled, and that compound will work within that tyre. If it stands up doing nothing, that compound doesn't work, even when it's in a dark, cool place, okay? So you should always be careful. Be very careful about buying secondhand tires anyway. I would say that's a no-no straight away, okay? Because cords can be ruptured, uh, the inner structure could be damaged, and you don't know until you start using it, okay? But the age of a tire does make a difference. It really does make a difference, okay? So on the side wall of the tire, you have loads of information, and there will be a, a DOT stamp on there somewhere, which is cast in, and it will tell you the week of the year, and the year that's denoted on that. So I'm showing you these tires here. These are the age of the tires, and uh, you've got a very old tire on this, which will be original. It's the spare 02, 2002. So what are we at? Nearly 2022, you can say. So you do the maths, that's over 10 years old, which on a steer axle for me, even on a car, is a no-no. Those tires are now going to be changed, yes. So something to note, something to note, guys, you check the age of your tyres, check the age of the tyres when you buy them new, because sometimes these tyres will have been sitting around in storage to two to three years from new, okay, which is not a good bet. You want new, new tyres, as new as you can get them, so the compound's fresh, you can then work them. If you need to store tyres in, in any way, shape or form, then rotate them, yeah? Have them on wheels, mounted on rims, and then rotate them. Have them uh, changed over. Um, say when you do an inspection, swap them over. Uh, some guys that have winter tyres, for instance, and summer tyres, that's, that's good. Yeah, they're only sitting around for six months, aren't they? But that's not ideal. You don't want to have them standing around or sitting around for years at all. Yeah, especially on a vehicle... Uh, which has weight on it as well because that will disform the tire over a period of time if you've got something parked up in the garage yeah even if it's on axle stands it is still going to degrade unfortunately that is just the nature of the beast
okay yes i have seen tires have exploded from uh, vehicles that have come out of storage and the tires have been a little bit rotten but from the outside they don't look it until they've started to be worked okay now the cord structures themselves are worked continually yeah once the vehicle's rolling the more weight on them the more stress a tire will actually get yeah so uh, you can imagine with commercial vehicles they get changed quite often they get damaged quite often and they wear out very quickly yeah so uh, that's just a thing just a thing to note so there you go there's a little bit of adding addendium information for you okay and i hope it's helpful for you all right until the next video i shall see you later